G'day boys and girls, welcome to another tools and stuff video and surprise surprise this week it's a Makita review and this week we have not one, not two, not three impacts, we're not stopping at four, but all five Makita 40 volt XGT impacts in the one video. This is going to be epic. Now when I say five impacts, two of these impacts are impact drivers and they are purple because they are from Japan. If you want to know more about those impact drivers and how you can get a colored one from Japan, take a look down in the description. The other three impacts are of course impact wrenches. We have the low torque, the mid torque and the high torque. Now this one is a three quarter inch drive which I know is going to cause anxiety issues for some of you being that these two are both half inch drives and we're going to put them up against each other but there's not a lot you can do about that because they don't make this in a half inch. Don't complain to me, go complain to Makita. Now what are we going to do with these impacts in this video? Well we're going to put them all up against each other driving some screws. Now I'm going to sort of rank them. We're going to see how far each one can get driving big fasteners. We'll just keep getting bigger and bigger until each one drops out until presumably we are left with just this beast and a very very large screw. That's the plan and we'll get to it after I tell you a few numbers about these things. First up the TD001G impact driver made in Japan. It has a top speed of 3700 RPM and a top impact rate of 4400. It boasts a torque rating of 220 Newton meters. The TD002G is also made in Japan. It has a top speed of 3700 RPM and a top impact rate of 4600 impacts per minute. It also has a top fastening torque of 220 Newton meters but it does come with DST. Ooh. Next up we have the first of the impact wrenches, the TW004G with a top speed of 3200 RPM and a top impact rate of 4000 impacts. It has a max fastening torque of 350 Newton meters and it's made in China. Also from China, the TW008G with a maximum speed of 2300 RPM and maximum impacts of 2900 RPM. It has a maximum fastening torque of 650 Newton meters. And last, but by no means least, the TW001G, which has a top speed of 1800 RPM, a top impact rate of 2500 impacts a minute and a maximum fastening torque of, wait for it, 1800 Newton meters. This test could get very interesting. And this tool is made in Japan. Now hopefully you noticed as the tools got bigger, they got slower. Not only did they get slower, but they have less impacts. So more impacts, more speed, less, less again. So these two, are the fastest and they have the most impacts. So do they drive screws the fastest? Do these drive quicker than this? Or does the extra mass of this thing whack those screws in more per hit making it faster than this? And of course the maximum fastening torque went up as we went along also. I'm not going to give you the nut busting torque of these because we're not going to be doing that in this video. If you want to see the nut busting torque how much torque these have with large sockets on them, take a look at this channel up here. So let's take a look now at some of the fasteners we will be using in this video. We're going to start with these Simpson Strong Drive SDWS timber screws. We're going to start 4 inch, then 6, then 8, all the way up to 10, and we'll see if they can all do it. These screws will all be driven without pilot holes through pine, they are 0.22 of an inch in diameter or 5.6 millimeters. 
If all the drivers can do all of these, we'll move on to Simpson Strong Drive SDWS Stainless Steel Timber Screws. They're the same length as the previous screws, 4, 6, 8, 10 inches or 100, 150, 200, 250 millimeters, but they are much bigger in the girth department. They are 0.276 of an inch or 7 millimeters. These also require no pilot holes. These are going to be a bit of a test for the impact drivers, but the impact wrenches should cope no problem. Or will they? Once the drivers have driven these, if they can, we'll move on to the big boys. These are M12 300mm long coach screws, or half inch by one foot. Can anything drive these all the way through? If they can, we'll move on to these M16 by 200 millimeters long or 5 eighths of an inch by 8 inches. These are getting pretty big, but I do have one more. This is an M20 coach bolt. It is 150 millimeters long. That's 6 inches by 3 quarters of an inch. Can the largest one do this? I don't think any of the others will, but maybe the TW001G will be able to pull that one off time will tell. Now I've got plenty of adapters and bits to do these tests but I may have to get some more because the bits that come with the stainless steel Simpson strong drive screws do not fit in an impact driver. They are unfortunately much larger than your quarter inch drive. So what to do, what to do. There's my solution for the half inch drives. That's what we've got to do on the 19 to make it a half. Can't get around that. Don't complain. Half inch to quarter drives. How many of you are going to be triggered if I take one of these adapters? Put it onto that. Put this into the end of there. And then shove that inside our impact driver. Is that going to wind you up? I'm guessing it probably is. I will try my best to find the right driver bit. But it's not a common one going from a quarter to a T50. But I'll see what I can do. While I go and see if I can find some of those driver bits, why don't you go and check out the timber that we're going to be driving all these screws into. I have half a dozen lengths here of treated pine. It is 140 wide by 45 deep. 45 deep is of course the most important part. So yeah, 6 deep I have picked them with the least amount of imperfections as possible, trying to get ones that all have similar grain so that this is as fair as possible. Most of the screws, of course, will not be going through that many layers, but when we get to the final tests, presumably we'll be going all the way through. So, let's get stuck into it. Well, hang on a minute, did I find those driver bits? I sure did, but it turns out a quarter inch drive to a Torx 50 is pretty hard to find, and I should have looked first at this company, I guess, because it made sense with the rest of the video, but Eventually, I found them from Simpson. That's right, Simpson's trying to make them. Um, but yeah, not many companies do it. In fact, I couldn't find another one. Not that went from quarter to T50. Half inch drive to Torx 50, pretty common. But yeah, not so much in the quarter inch. Now you may have noticed so far I've been calling these Simpson Strong Drive Timber Screws. That's because saying the full title Simpson Strong Tie Strong Drive SDWS Timber Screws is a bit of a mouthful. So I normally abbreviate Simpson Strong Tie to just Simpson. So if you've been triggered by that earlier on, you can remove your comment now. Just thought I'd better explain that. Now we're going to start with these 4 inch screws. We've got a freshly charged 4 amp hour battery on all 5 drivers. Let's see if we can put them all on screen together driving 4 inch screws. 3, 2, 1. Straight out of the gate the big boy smashed it pretty hard. Let's see how they now all go with the 6 inch screws. 3, 2, 1. So when we take a look at the 100mm or 4 inch screws, these two were pretty much neck and neck because they basically didn't need to impact. Also, pretty close together were these two, the low torque impact wrench and the new DST impact driver. And in both tests this was last. But in the 6 inch test, these two, once again pretty close together, but in both tests I think this one just had it. So. 4 and 6 inch screws, no point in using an impact wrench like people keep telling me. 
you could just stick with an impact driver. These two started to get a bit further apart. This one having to impact a bit more with that six inch screw. Now how will they all go with eight inch or 200 millimeter screws? This is where these two may start slowing down a bit. And probably that one as well. The high torque smashed that in without much trouble at all. And the mid torque, well, that was about 50 50 on the impacts, you know, started about halfway. And as for these three, well, they all basically impacted the whole way through. The teens are next. <laughs> So I think they're all doing pretty well so far. The high torque just impacting for that last couple of inches. The mid torque about halfway again, about five out of 10 inches. And the other three pretty much impacting right from the start, but they all did it no problem at all. You could easily just drive those with an impact driver. You don't need a large impact wrench. But what about the next screws? I've decided just to jump straight to the big ones. There's not much point doing the smaller ones. So we're gonna start with this eight inch one here. Now these are the same length. 8 and 10 inch, right? But they are much bigger in the girth department. And that's what we need these T50s for. So let's see how they go with the stainless timber screws, 7 millimeters in diameter. Three, two, one. Right, without going and watching that particular test, let me tell you what I just experienced. First time this one sort of struggled, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, impacted pretty much the whole way, I think. Uh, yeah, a totally different experience on that larger girth screw. All of a sudden, this thing was like, whoa, I'm going to have to put some work in here. Then this one behaved pretty much how I expected. Then we got to this one, and it got awfully uncomfortable on the old tennis elbow. Then I started with the DST impact, and I thought, this feels nice, certainly compared to what I had just done with this thing, because this thing was shaking the hell out of my elbow. But this, this felt really good, until we got near the end of the screw, and it started to struggle that last sort of inch, and trying to get the head in, it really had a problem. Whereas the original impact driver did not seem to go in much better at the end, more consistent all the way through. And I think that one was quicker than this one for the first time, but I'd have to watch the footage. But before I do that, how about we take a look at the 10 inch ones? Three, two, one. So that was interesting, the 001 doing better than the 002, which was surprising. I almost thought this one wasn't going to make it. I was getting close to giving up, and then I thought, no, come on, power on, baby. And we got there in the end, but that was probably getting to the limit of this tool. And surprisingly, the first generation did better. And yeah, the others, boy oh boy, my elbow certainly knows it's been um, doing some tests. The mid torque did pretty well, but you could feel it, you know, that was it starting to starting to feel the pain. And the high torque, no problem at all. But you really notice that slower impact. Right, what do we have next? What bolts or screws was I gonna use for the next test? Let me take a look. So here we go. One foot long, half an inch in diameter, that's 300 by 12 mil. Are we going to be able to drive these with any of them without a pilot hole? What do you reckon? Shall we go no pilot hole to begin with? Yeah, no pilot hole. Lock in load. Three, two, one. Snapped it off. 
mid torque 10 mil pilot hole down to about halfway. Let's go. Three, two, one. Right, I've drilled a pilot hole for this test too. We're going to use the low torque impact and I'm also going to show you the difference between the low and the high gears because I know a lot of you are going to be saying use the low gear because you're confusing an impact with a drill. Okay, so I'm going to start on the low and then we're going to ramp it up. Setting one. Drills have more torque in a lower gear, impacting tools, impact wrenches, impact drivers have more torque in the high gears. High torque with a pilot hole. Three, two, one. Mid talk, removing bolt. Three, two, one. Now it's going to be way too much of a workout for these two impact drivers. So what I'm going to do here is drive them with the two screws that have just been in and I've already got the hole all the way through full of the threads so we'll see if they can even do it just like that if not, well they would never do it the other way obviously hopefully the adapter doesn't break 3, 2, 1 
Come here, do it. Now, is it worth going any bigger? I have the 16 by 200s here. That's 5 eighths of an inch by 8 inches. Is that too much to ask? Well, I've got a 24 mil socket here, which is the largest that I can find that I've got for an impact. So I don't know what's going to happen if we need to move up to this sucker. Because, yeah, going to be a big problem there. Um, I'm going to need a very big socket. And I don't think I've got any impact sockets that big. But will we get there? Let's see if the high torque can drive this. No pilot hole. Is that asking a bit much? Three, two, one. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. Far up. Well, she did it just, but the power needed to go from this to this is going to be probably a bit too much. And like I say, I don't have a socket for it. And I don't really want to go and buy a socket for this thing to put in one screw that's going to end up costing me over $50. Especially when I think it's probably not going to do it. And why would you even drive that directly into timber with no pilot hole? Be a bit silly, wouldn't it? And there'll be a lot of you saying, you're not even meant to use impact wrenches for that at all. Um, yeah, well, whatever. You can vent all you want down in the comments. I don't care. The battery, after all that abuse, is still showing three bars on it, so that's pretty good. And I guess we should round this video off now. The battery is still showing three bars after all that abuse, so that's pretty good. And now I guess we should round this thing off and take a look at an overview of the whole picture here. But first, it's... Bonus footage time! Woo! Let's see if there's a difference in efficiency driving some 10 inch Simpson Strong Tide WS blah 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 screws with an adapter like this as opposed to a more normal looking one like this. What do you reckon? Place your bets now. I don't think it'll be that different. Three, two, two, one. Bonus content number two. What do we have here? Huh? What do you reckon about that? She's a bit hard to fit on the bench. If you've ever thought, I don't really want to bend down and undo those nuts off this steel floor. I want to stand at my usual height and just place my trigger finger where I wish and get the job done. Well, Makita do have a solution for you and it is adjustable. Although it is made, I'm guessing, for Japanese people because even at the furthest extent it's still a bit short for me personally. Um, and on that level there, if you're doing the floor, it would be no use at all. And why just the ground, you're saying? Well, you could be doing a wall or something. You could, but try to hold this up. This is the, the mid-torque on the end, and it's almost impossible to control if you're trying to hold it out horizontally. So it's for vertical applications, this particular tool. But they do also make them for rebar tires. Now that's something that crouching down is a pain in the bum having to do. So you can just walk along going choom, 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 without having to bend over. That's a plus. Also, take a look at this one. This one's for a drill. It turns out I don't actually have any Makita tools that fit this particular model. Um, all my drills and stuff, yeah, don't fit the 18s or the 40s. But this one's made in Japan. It's got a big trigger here. Rubber grip down here. So they're quite cool things, but 
you have to find the right one for your model of drill which I clearly haven't done but that first extension handle I showed you she fits the blower <laughs> and now I can blow people from a distance nifty now it's hard enough to find quiet time to film videos at the best of times but as of a few days back Samoa beat England at the Rugby League World Cup and made it into the final and since then it seems every second person in Auckland is a Samoan and this honking has been going now for about 18 hours thankfully tomorrow morning it will all be over one way or the other uh, if they win I'm guessing it's going to get really loud certainly far more passionate. The Samoan supporters are certainly far more passionate than the All Black supporters do. As if screaming birds, barking dogs and helicopters wasn't enough to contend with. So, might be a little bit noisy in the background. Um, let's start with the big fella here the high torque the tw001g well it smashed all those tests pretty much um one more thing while we're at it this here isn't a fault it's perfectly normal okay they've got a junction in here to help protect the vibration going to the battery to stop the connections wobbling around and the tool ending up cutting out from vibration and stuff like that so that it's perfectly normal lots of people have asked me about that it's not broken if you want a tool that can drive every screw that you're ever going to want to drive well then this will do the job but just remember it's super heavy let's see just how heavy it is let's put it on the scales here with the 4 amp hour battery it comes in at just over 4.2 kgs so with an 8 amp hour battery you're looking at just over 5 kgs so that's a lot of weight you've got to have on the end of your arm just to put in screws if you don't need to if you can get away with something lighter because that's about 3 kgs heavier than just using an impact driver next up the mid torque now I was a little bit surprised with the mid torque especially on reviewing the footage that it did not perform that well with some of the bigger fasteners it actually was slower than the low torque uh, the low torque managed to get them in quicker than this which was as I say surprising while we're looking at this as well I'll just show you this one and the low torque both come with either a friction ring or a detent ball so the detent on this particular one is not a round ball but rather a pointy one and that can be quite annoying sometimes it actually gets stuck on the sockets and you've got to push something in there to push that in because it's not round so it's hard to get off but if you want something stuck on there good and proper well works quite good I guess so you can get that with that or with the friction ring like we have here on this low torque one and the low torque does also come with the pin so both of those have either option depending on basically what you like and if you get the one with the pin you don't get the hole all the way through there like you do with the friction ring and why would you want the hole all the way through well because you can do this okay like that put one of these rubber o-rings on put a pin through there o-ring it's now never coming off when you're pulling it backwards and forwards it's not going to catch on a nut and be left behind very good if you're using the same socket all day long the low torque was a bit of an interesting one I thought because it didn't do so well up against just the plain impact drivers on some of the smaller screws we just tested but did better than the mid torque impact wrench and the impact drivers when it came to like those 8 and 10 inch stainless screws so it was a little bit odd at first I was thinking you know why bother with this but then it sort of came into its own towards the end of the testing so yeah I'm not really sure what to make of that um, it all comes down to the speeds and the impacts and the size of the anvil like I said earlier if you've got more whack and this one's still pretty quick compared to these two so maybe that just yeah helped it out a bit managed to knock it in a bit quicker this one just slow and steady wins the race sort of style but <laughs> didn't win the race <laughs> this one did 
uh, yeah, take out of that what you want, I guess. Last but not least, we have the impact drivers. Another surprising result with these, but that was the whole purpose of this video, to find out where these things have their sweet spot, which ones overlap, which ones are good for what tasks. And surprisingly, the TD001G, first generation, much better than the second generation when it comes to longer screws. Um, bigger diameter and stuff, this thing better than this. I was surprised. The DST version feels much nicer to use. It's a more comfortable tool than all the rest of them. It's got like a, a nicer trigger and the, the dual spring technology helps a little bit with the vibration. It doesn't sound as loud. So it's, it's sort of the nicest tool to use. But when you start getting into the big stuff, as you saw, it doesn't have the muscle that this one has or these have. Um, I mean, these obviously you'd expect them to have the muscle. But I was surprised that this one beat this. But it's still probably my nicest driver out of these, you know, personally, just the feel of it. As long as, of course, you don't want to drive big stuff. Taking a quick look at the battery life. Three bars, three bars, three bars, ooh, four bars, and three bars. Mid-torque, the only one that didn't lose a bar. If I was to only have two of these tools, I'd probably go the 002G and the 007G. This is the 8. I'd go with the 7 because it has the um, friction ring, which I prefer to this pin. Um, yeah, I'd do that because, as you saw, this one, not so good on the big ones, but nicer to use on the shorter length screws. So I'd use that for the small stuff and bigger stuff, use that one. This one, just a bit too heavy for sort of regular use. This one's not a bad weight, really, if you need to drive big stuff. Not as quick, but as long as you're not doing millions of stuff, then should be all good. And I think I'm going to leave it there because it's just too damn noisy and too hard to concentrate and get a video done with all this honking and yahooing and stuff going on in the background and music and bass and everything far out. Um, let me know which ones of these you like, which ones you've got, which ones you prefer, what you use them for. Uh, this is, of course, just a test, as you will have seen, for driving screws and fasteners, not um, undoing nuts and bolts, which is more what these things are designed for. But I thought it'd be interesting just to put all the current sizes of impact up against each other, just to see how they do. So, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on another one in a few days' time, maybe even tomorrow, who knows, pumping out a lot at the moment. If you haven't already subscribed, do that down below, and I'll check you out on the next one. Cheers, guys. Far out. Oh, the house is shaking with a boost. Who's gonna win? You'll know by the time this video goes up.